What is going on, YouTube? What is going on, Kansas City? And what is going on, everybody? And welcome to the Beat of KC. I have the privilege, yet again, to bring back Michael Darcy. You know, he obviously runs a phenomenal YouTube channel in KC Sports Report. Head on over there, smash that subscribe button. He is killing it. 6,000 subscribers. First of all, I want to tell you, it's 6,000, correct? Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, man. That's freaking amazing. I, I tell you, that I know the feeling of hitting at least 4,000 from my other channel, you know, 6,000, you're, you're climbing towards 10. So congratulations on that. Um, I appreciate that's it. Absolutely awesome, man. So we're going to be talking Kansas City Royals. I was, we were talking before we started this. Um, this is going to be my fix, guys. I'm super pumped about the Kansas City Royals right now. And nobody better to talk to than uh, Michael about this. So we're going to jump right in. Um, you know, what, what are you currently feeling right now about the team? I know we're, you know, we're kind of clicking, it feels like, in some aspects. We're seeing some better starting pitching. The bullpen's kind of coming through a little bit. Uh, key situations are we're seeing us come through. What are you thinking right now? You know, honestly, I am uh, fairly impressed with how they've rebounded over the past couple weeks. So, I mean, obviously, we had that 11-game losing streak. Uh, I don't want to say that I was close to throwing in the towel, but we've seen in uh, previous years when the Royals start to kind of fall off, uh, they fall off pretty hard. And, yeah. and usually they're out of it. Uh, pretty quickly but you know to this team's credit they didn't give up and they they battled back out of that uh, uh that, well they built up like a seven or eight game lead above 500 they lost that completely in a week and they <laughs> built it back up now they're 27 and 26 i believe they're a game yeah. above 500 that's fantastic and for this team with the expectations going into the season being pretty low uh, i think they're doing pretty well right now and honestly i don't really know what to expect for the rest of the season but i think that if you can kind of stay around the 500 mark uh, getting towards the all-star break, that's as about as good as I can ask for because I don't think anybody expected this team to be anywhere near this goal and, and especially um, at this part in the season. For sure, man. And, you know, I this was, you know, one of the biggest things I wanted to ask you is, you know, because I've seen your live streams uh, when you're talking about, you know, the Kansas City Royals. And it seems like as of late, some of our, and you hit on it last time we talked about the Royals too, with like Dozier not being able to like fully recover from the pandemic. Um, and, and, you know, obviously Mondesi came back for a, a quick minute and then he's, you know, potentially on the IR again. Dude's um, made a glass. It's so yeah. frustrating. Yeah. It's and, so and frustrating. So, for sure. And so we're seeing, I, I think what's making me happy is we're seeing some players step up, like going into from spring training, going into the season, if you would have told me Nicky Lopez is making sick plays at shortstop and, you know, is kind of holding his weight at the plate, not like, you know, overwhelming or like blowing us away or anything, but at least holding his weight, I would have been like, I'll take it all day. So that kind of leads me to the question. We're seeing a Kelvin Gutierrez. Yeah. And not Kelvin, but Gutierrez. <laughs> We're seeing uh, Oliveras come up and, and just holy smokes. I mean, we're seeing players step up. What are your thoughts about that uh, with everything that's going on with that? Honestly, Kelvin Gutierrez is the guy that we needed uh, out of Hunter Dozier, who he hasn't been. And honestly, it's kind of a surprise that this guy is uh, uh, performing the way that he is. I know that he got called up a few years ago. Uh, we acquired him in the, the Kelvin Herrera trade, actually. And, you know, I kind of expected him to be kind of just a bench batter or somebody that could uh, be a backup guy on the bench. But honestly, I think that he's kind of showing right now that Maybe Dozier's not the future, and maybe Gutierrez could be a, a, a potential third baseman of the future. I know you kind of got Bobby Witt in the minors and maybe move him to third, uh, but you got options. And with Mondesi being hurt, maybe you do put Witt at shortstop. I mean, Bobby Witt. But that just kind of, you know, the Royals are in a position that uh, it's a good position to be in, and that's having so many good players at these positions that you're almost getting too full. Yeah. which honestly we've had too many holes in the past couple of years. So I'm going to take that problem, but it is going to leave a little bit of concern because Dozier, you just extended in the off season and he hasn't done anything and yeah. guys like Montessi can't stay healthy. And I think that Gutierrez is good, but being realistic here, I, I do think that he's going to kind of fall off here soon. Uh, but to your point, I mean, you're seeing guys uh, not only in the lineup, like Oliveras and uh, uh, who's their other bat that had just came up. Um, uh, I'm trying to think too. I can't even. It's uh, Gutierrez, Oliveras, and I can't remember who yeah, else it was. It, yeah, because they keep calling people up left and right. Cause yeah, but um, but I was gonna say like the pitching from the uh, the younger guys has been good too. Bubich is literally turning himself into a staple 
yes. in this staff. And honestly, yes. I think that uh, you're going to kind of get a little bit better pitching in the future. Uh, I do think that uh, you're going to call a few guys up here and there, and that's just going to make this rotation better and hopefully solidify a bit of the bullpen. For sure. You know, and that's kind of like uh, I was hoping because I do think I saw someone tweeted to, uh, today, and I, I'm not 100% sure who it was, but they said outside of Bubich going, uh, the the pitching staff is kind of to be determined. So yeah, um, I know Jackson Coar is shoving – down in the minors he won like may player of the month for pitching um he went against tonight against some big league com uh, competition jason hayward's on a rehab assignment um i think uh, there was a few other players d gordon uh is down there obviously as a minor leaguer um and he faced them and just did it with ease so you know i'm excited to see jackson come up and i do think honestly as crazy as it sounds i think jackson being in the majors and kind of being that good buddy that you know, Brady Singer had when they were in college, I think that kind of helps out because, you know, honestly, last night, I don't think Singer was on it. And um, that that definitely was something I wanted to talk to you about. If if you seen the game last night, Singer was kind of just living in the middle of the plate. And I think in all honesty, I mean, if the Pirates were a little bit better, I think they would have really made him kind of, you know, wish he wasn't hitting there. You know, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on like Brady Singer kind of you know, having that camaraderie and his good buddy coming up and, and them, you know, maybe going, going at it, you know, one and two, or, you know, him at least being there in that rotation. Well, it's, it's really good to have familiar faces, uh, having somebody you can kind of rely on. Cause I mean, keep in mind, Brady Singer, I'm not how, I'm not sure how old he is, but he's in his early twenties. So yeah. he's still a kid and, and to be in the big leagues and having all this pressure, uh, it's going to be good to have a guy that can kind of be there for him and, and vice versa. I think that Brady Singer can teach uh, Coar a lot of things that, quite frankly, Coar doesn't have. You know, uh, one thing that I do think is going to happen, I think he's going to be the next Royals pitcher that gets called up. Yep. And I think that uh, the only real problem with Coar is he's got very spotty command as of times. He's got all the stuff. It's just, can he command it? And, you know, yep. uh, you said Singer uh, over the plate last night. I, I agree. He was kind of getting a little bit over the plate. Um, and I, I do think that he's kind of got to tone that down a little bit. But, um, you know, Brady Singer shown flashes this year and last year of being an ace. And yes. I think that, you know, you're not always going to have your stuff every game. And last night was obviously one of those nights. But I, I do think that he's still learning and he can get better from it. For sure, man. And, you know, like I, I've heard that uh, I believe it's Lynch, Bubich, Singer and Co are all room together uh, in the offseason. They go and, and they're, I mean, they're working out together, they're throwing pins together. So I think you're just seeing that mesh and that cohesion come together. And I think once they really all are in the majors, I think they push each other to like, you know, crazy limits. And, and that's kind of reflects back on when like James Shields first came to the Kansas City Royals and just that mentorship he provided at Danny Duffy. And we're seeing like how that translated now. I mean, Duffy, when he goes out there, man, he's a workhorse and he goes out there and he has that mentality and that attitude on that bump. And it's like, nobody's going to beat me, even though, I mean, it happens, but you know, that's his mentality. And so I'm hoping that once these younger guys start to really come into the the rotation, because like, you know, Irvin Santana, like, you know, come on now. Like, yeah, I, I get, I get the plug in and, and hopefully get it, but Jackson should have been the one pitching that day, not him. And, you know, there's a few others like Mike Miner. I like I, Mike Miner has been kind of that, you know, duct tape and has getting us through the stuff, but you know, is he, is he going to maintain that for the whole year? Probably not. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to hit on, at least hit yeah. on that because uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. Now, this next thing is um, as we're getting closer and closer to more of a trade deadline, do you anticipate, and, and this is kind of someone where I've been stuck, you know, if we are somewhat at least in a good spot, do you anticipate the Royals potentially making a move? And if so, what, what do you feel would be the move for, you know, as of right now, I think we're two and a half games back of the wild card, which is pretty phenomenal at this point in the season. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that honestly, I, I can't see them buying or selling. They're just going to kind of hold at the deadline yeah. because I think that this is just kind of a progression year. Honestly, um, I, I think that they kind of know they got the pieces that they need. They got Benintendi in the off season through the trade. Yeah. He's a big addition. He had a grand slam last night. So we love to see that. Incredible. Uh, Carlos Santana, a guy that's been very clutch this year, hitting home runs and, and just a walk machine, which is what we needed him to be. 
Yeah. So I honestly think that you kind of got a few cornerstones on this offense. Um, and I don't think that you really necessarily need to acquire anybody because I don't think this is the Royals year. Um, but I think that if they do trade for anybody, it's going to be a, a back end bullpen uh, arms. I just think that they need somebody else. You know, I love Wade Davis with all my heart. I love that dude. I think that he's a stud or he was a stud, <laughs> but let's be honest here. Greg Holland and, and Wade Davis are not good pitchers anymore. They're, yeah. they're serviceable. Maybe if it's in like the five or the fifth or sixth inning and you're just getting blown out, maybe you bring them in just to eat up innings. But uh, uh, I just don't think that they should be in any high pressure situation. Yeah. So maybe you trade for somebody younger or, or go with somebody in the minors, but I'd be perfectly fine with Dayton Moore just holding this year. For sure. So that kind of leads me to a, I guess, a devil's advocate situation. So let's say we do start to, because we're going to go over the schedule here in a little bit. Let's say we start to struggle going into the trade deadline. Who do you envision the Royals trading away to get more, you know, prospects and, and things like that? Who do you envision that would be on that chopping block? I guess you could say. I don't think wit's going anywhere. Um, honestly, this could be a hot t- take and and I love the dude but Jorge Soler hasn't been very good this year and he's a guy that we've seen it at his peak it can hit like 50 home runs so he's (laughs) obviously got power but the problem is is I I think he's hitting like a buck 50 I don't don't know his average right now but it's not good um and he's his contract's done after this year so maybe he's a a guy that you flip uh uh, I know some of my friends want to try to get a top 100 bat for him I Mm -hmm. don't think that's going to happen he's not good enough this year yeah um I'd like to think that he's going to stay, but honestly, um, from a trade perspective, I think that maybe he's the only guy that I could see you parting ways with, or um, I hope it's nobody in the bullpen like Stamon or, or Brents uh, or Zuber, anybody like that. Cause I, I see those guys as a potential value later on down the line. For sure. And you know, that's kind of, um, it's tough because I think Jorge Soler could have potentially really generated you a lot um, last year. And obviously with this being a year that he's struggling mightily um, and, you know, he, you're probably not going to get a huge return for that just because he is in a contract year. Um, It's just, it's a tough situation. Um, And and at that point, like, why not just hold on to him? Well, and that, you know, and that's, that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, you know, I was listening to a podcast today, it's a couple of Kansas city guys. And uh, that was like, one of their questions was, you know, what do we, what do we do with Jorge Soler? Like, you know, you're not going to capitalize on a massive trade right now. So ideally their, their biggest thing was that they would just hold and you're, you're more than likely going to get a decent contract out of him. You know, he's not going to obviously get high dollar because he's not producing in a, in a contract year. And outside of the 50 home runs or whatever he hit that one year, he really hasn't done anything outside of that either. So it's just very, very interesting to see, you know, that whole entire situation. So that does lead me to this next piece because, you know, we are coming up, you know, like we've been talking about, the Royals have been progressively doing better. Uh, We're seeing a lot of good things. So from a schedule perspective, I do feel that it is getting a lot easier. Um, you know, we're heading into a series against the Twins. It is a four-game series. Uh, following that, it looks like a three-game series against the Angels, which is without Mike Trout. Um, but then we kind of head into, you know, Oakland Athletics, which they've been doing really well in the West. And then we go into what seems to be our nemesis in the Detroit Tigers. And then we're looking oh, at the, the Red Sox and the Yankees. So it continues to kind of get a little bit more progressively tough, I guess you could say, but going into this, you know, are you excited for where we currently are? I mean, we're going to be playing the twins and then we're heading to a West coast trip. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Honestly, um, we were talking about this before we started recording. You got to beat the bad teams and the twins are, I don't know. They're not statistically the worst team in the division, but they just are horrendous. They're way under 500. You should beat them. There is no excuse to not beat them. Uh, obviously you're not always going to win. You're going to lose a series here or there, but I, I do think that out of a three game series, you should win that series. Yeah. But you know, my mindset with the Royals right now is whoever you're playing against, just try to uh, come out of the road trip with a split. If you can go five and five in a 10 game road trip or, or six and six in a 12 game, 
just stay above 500 or, or hover around there because as long as you're kind of teetering around that 500 mark uh, around the all-star break and even after that, you're going to have a chance to put yourself in the wild card. Um, we've seen a couple teams a couple years ago that uh, they didn't have losing records, but they weren't very many games over 500 and they made the wild card. So I really think that as long as you can kind of keep your head above the water and just kind of keep floating, you're going to have a chance to put yourself in that position. Most definitely. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see how they start to handle, you know, if they, it, like we said, we talked, they need to handle the, the struggling teams, the twins, you know, were projected to at least finish second. Some people were predicting them to win the central, you know, it just hasn't gone their way for whatever reason. I mean, if you really look at that lineup and really that pitching staff, it shouldn't be doing what it's doing. Um, but yeah, definitely should it, it, you're, they're coming here. Uh, you know, the weather's starting to warm up. I would expect, the Royals at least to do something good against them. It'll be interesting to see how they do against Oakland. That's one that I'm going to be excited about because, you know, Oakland's always scrappy. Um, I mean, they always have decent pitching, good enough pitching that will, you know, get them innings. And then, you know, their, their lineup just seems to do well. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see going from there. And then it seems like the later and later we get into June where we're getting into a little bit more tougher teams against the Yankees in New York. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we go to Boston. So It'll be very, very interesting to see. Um, so with that being said, later in the month, uh, you know, we're getting closer to July. Obviously, the Major League Baseball draft is coming up. I don't know how much you really dive into the draft. Um, with me starting to do this YouTube thing from a sports perspective, I'm, I really did kind of start looking because I'm just always intrigued. Uh, mm -hmm. I do fantasy baseball as well. That is very involved with like minor leaguers and stuff. I'm hearing the rumor that Kamar Rocker – potentially could fall to the Kansas City Royals. Mm -hmm. Just just on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited would you be if Kamar Rocker fell to the Royals? A 25. <laughs> I mean, that – I don't think people really understand. And, and, well, there's a lot to unpack there. If Kumar Rocker fell to the Royals, in three or four years tops, we'd have the best rotation in baseball. And it would not be close. You would have Brady Singer, who on any other team would be a 1, Asa Lacey and Kumar Rocker. And there's a very good likelihood that Ace Lacey could be your two. Yes. I mean, it is unbelievable what we would have. Um, and honestly, and the reason why he's falling is I have a friend that's kind of keeping me in the loop with all these uh, uh, prospects about the draft. I couldn't give you names, but yeah, yeah. I have been looking over it. And a lot of the high school bats that were kind of in the projected 10 to 20 range, they're playing very well right now, which is why Jack Leader and Kumar Rocker, the guys that were going to go like one and two in the draft, they've yeah. fallen so far. So I would love for the Royals to pick him up. And I think that you might even have your pick between Leiter or Kumar. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I've started to see uh, some of these, like you said, the high school shortstops. There's two of them specifically that I've really climbed. Um, and, and some of those, you know, obviously we have Bobby Witt. We still have Mondesi. Mm -hmm. We still have um, the – Kid we drafted from Baylor last year. I think we got another one from Florida the same year, uh, the Brady Singer and, and Coar. I, I think mean, it's we went Brady McConnell. I, yes, I think. yeah. So we went all out with with the, like third baseman, shortstop type stuff. So rightfully so, send those guys up to the top and let those good pitchers fall down. And I think that's honestly, you know, like you said, just thinking about what that potentially could be. I, I mean, that is incredible because you got Alec Marsh coming up. Man, I, I've been reading a lot about him. Um, you know, if you get a chance, just look at some of his stuff, just where he's talking, he's taught just his mentality, his, his bulldog mentality is just incredible. He like, he throws does not want to yeah, throw his flame. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I'm super pumped about him. I was really excited about Jonathan Bolin, but he mm -hmm. obviously has to have Tommy John, which is unfortunate, but you know, that happens more often now. Uh, but yeah, I think our pitching staff, that's and that's been my biggest thing with the Kansas City Royals for the longest time. It felt like we just struggled to develop starting pitchers. I mean, a perfect example was Montgomery. Um, you know, we capitalized on trading him away, but really he didn't develop into what we expected. And they even you sent him make, to the. You get sorry. You can make the argument, Luke Cochavers, in that discussion too. I mean, there there you go. I mean, a guy that has to go to the pen because he couldn't perform. Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's so many of them. It's been yeah. crazy. So. You know, and that, and that's something that I, you know, we talked about last time um, when we were talking about the Chiefs and we were kind of talking, I, I think it was, you know, I was talking to you about it. 
it was from a draft perspective, like valuing draft picks. Um, I think it's from a baseball perspective, it's that much harder, even though there's more rounds, because there's mm-hmm. so many opportunities. Um, you know, you don't know how kids once they get to, I mean, because we're talking high school, like young kids. You're that, talking like, to me. <laughs> like, <yes>. you're ta- <laughs> I could not imagine playing in the show or I mean, being I'm, drafted to play in the show. That and then them like saying, hey, you know what? Your signing bonus is going to be $7 million. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, hey, here's a potentially a Nike. Deal. I mean, I, I just think it's something like that. And you don't know how you're going to perform the pressure of like, you know, knowing that you have to perform and, and do well to get to where you need to go. It's just incredible. So, yeah, man, I think it's just a, extremely a difficult thing from a draft perspective to nail those every year. Cause you go back and look at some of the drafts we've had. I mean, we missed in the, the Bubba Starling draft. I hate to say it cause he's obviously mm-hmm. a local guy, but if you look at who was drafted below him, it was just cr- incredible. Yeah. Uh, Luke Hochaver, the same draft. I mean, that's that Kershaw draft. went like seventh or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and, and all those teams that missed on Mike Trout was incredible. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's just a difficult thing from a draft perspective. And that's, what's unique about at least the Royals I feel have hit on some of those players. I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, what are you, what are your thoughts on, on Nick Prado and when do you, you maybe anticipate him potentially coming up? He's slugging right now. Cause honestly, <laughs> Nick Prado was a guy that before spring training started, I kind of wrote off, you know, he was the yeah. first round pick. I think it was 2017. Uh, so it was towards the end of the first round. Cause we were somewhat relevant in 2017. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think that he's going to have a chance to make the, make the show i don't really know what we're going to get from him i think that he could be a solid everyday uh starting first baseman but right now you got carlos santana i don't really want to see him go anywhere because he's playing phenomenal yeah. um uh but one thing that i kind of want to jump back to really quickly and i hope you don't mind no go ahead I, I wanted to talk about how i don't think that drafting a high school bat seventh overall would be a good idea because when you look at where the royals are right now they're potentially a year or two away from from actually making the playoffs. And I don't think that that's an outlandish thing to say. Yeah. So we need people that could potentially play in one or two years. And I think a college bat is a better idea, but you know, you could even go the other route and get a college pitcher because you can always get hitting later. You can always buy hitting. We did that with Carlos Santana and Benintendi yep. and, and all those other guys, you can buy hitting every year. You can't buy pitching in a smaller market because they're just it's it's you can't do it. I mean, yeah. you saw Garrett Cole sign like a three hundred and something million dollar contract with the Yankees. The Royals couldn't do that. But if you draft guys like Asa Lacy and Kumar Rocker and, and Brady Singer, when they develop into the great pitchers that we think that they can be, you got them for seven years. Yep. So pitching, I think, would probably be the best mentality, uh, at least right now. But I think that if you do get a bat, get one that's more refined. For sure. You know, and that's kind of that was leading me to the next. So there is a catcher out there from Louisville who is a freaking stud, I believe. Um, If outside of, you know, because I've seen they they project us to take a a couple outfielders Mm. um, in in some of the mock drafts. And it's not it's not for me. It's just not like I I think it's isn't it Khalil Lee? Yeah, yeah well that that was one that obviously Khalil Watson, maybe I yeah. get my clothes um, mixed up. But yeah, I mean, we you know, it's just it's not for me. I want, I want one of those pitchers, like mm-hmm. even Ty Montgomery uh, out of, out of Texas, uh, Ty Madden, excuse me, Ty Madden um, is who I, you know, if we miss out on rocker lighter, at least go with Madden from Texas, that would be phenomenal. So, um, but that definitely did, uh, you know, you kind of hit on a little bit. What, if you had to lock down your guests right now, when the Royals are in the playoffs and we'll say at least competing to get back to an AL championship and potentially a world series, when do you envision and what year do you think that'll start happening? I think guys like Bobby Witt and Ace Lacey are going to get called up next year. And I think that, you know, we saw this, the last uh, wave, so to speak, when Hosmer and Moustakas came up, I believe it was 2011. It took them a couple of years to kind of put it together. And in 2013, mm-hmm. they just missed out on the playoffs 14 and 15. They obviously did man uh, fantastic things, yep. but I don't really expect that to change. I think that this team is going to rely heavily on Bobby Witt Jr., whether he wants to do it or not. I think that yeah. he's going to be a pretty big part of this offense. He had three home runs a couple of days ago. So the dude's <laughs> got the power, and he's got the speed and all the intangibles. Uh, and it's also going to rely on Asa Lacy because he's a college pitcher uh, touted by many as one of the best pitchers from that draft class. Yeah. You're going to need your prospects to be good in order to be a contender. So I think that 
realistically, I think that we could be World Series contenders by 2024, 2025. Okay. Yeah, and see, I was – my mind when I was kind of thinking of this, I was saying I feel we could make the playoffs in 2023 – and I would have to agree with you. I think that at least we could see the Royals in a, an AL championship by 2024-ish, maybe even, I mean, maybe even 2023, it just depends. Like you said, that's been one of the biggest, you know, knocks that I've had on Dayton Moore is outside, honestly, of, you know, Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakis, and we'll say a few others, because I would say, you know, Minor, uh, Meyer um, that went to the Padres, obviously was, uh, you know, a decent, a decent pick. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, you've had your Bubba Starlings. You've had, uh, you know, Prado hasn't been that pick until more recently. We know it takes time, but uh, there was another kid that they drafted first round. Uh, what, it's Christian Cologne. Well, Christian Cologne's Great. another one. They drafted a pitcher that stepped away from the game for like three years or two years, and he just now oh, finally yeah. – he got Finally. shell shocked, I think. And that's yeah. just kind of that's the concern with drafting somebody who's my <laughs> age. You don't know what they're gonna do. And th that's just development stuff. Like you you should know this going into a draft that hey, this dude might literally quit the game of baseball in a couple years. Yeah, like that I mean, yeah. Is that Grinky 2.0? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Is that Grinky wanted to play shortstop for us? Which thank God we didn't let him, but yeah. You know, I was listening to 810 when I was driving home today, and they actually were talking about the Zach Grinke trade um, and what led us to the World Series. Um, and that was one of the one things that they were talking about is the fact that and they've never I guess Seren Petro was talking to Dayton Moore doing an interview. And in this and in this interview, Dayton Moore kind of opened up and he said that Zach Grinke came to them and said that here's a list of teams that. I want to get traded to. I do not want to play for the Kansas City Royals anymore. And he's like, look, Zach, we're going to be competing. Um, and he's like, I, I don't care. I don't want to play for the Royals anymore. So they went through the entire list that he offered. And I guess everyone was like, nope, we don't want him. We don't want him. Um, and so it got to the end. And he's like, look, man, we we literally went through your entire list of, of teams. Nobody wants you. Um, and so I guess he was like, you got to show up to spring training. And again, he was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to play for the Royals. So finally, he was like, I'll go to the, the Brewers. And I mean, think about that, man. The Milwaukee Brewers returned you, Alcides Escobar, Lorenzo Kane, wasn't it Jeremy Jeffress? And then uh, in so. return, I mean, I mean, that ideally gave you one of the best center fielders of the decade. Uh, you know, Alcides Escobar was a staple at shortstop, you know, wasn't the greatest of hitters, but really was a staple at shortstop for you. And, you know, Jeremy Jeffers didn't really pan out for us. But then, I mean, just the, if that Zach Greeky trade did not happen, what would the Royals have even won the World Series? And that's what they were talking about. Yeah. You know, what are, what are your thoughts about that? Because that was, you know, I think about it, but when it's really laid out that way and you hear kind of from Dayton Moore talking about it, it's kind of like, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, Grinky is a, a head case. Yeah, I, he is. He's a crazy dude. Uh, like I said, he wanted to play shortstop, and we wouldn't let him. So he's like, trade me. So he's crazy. But um, and this is just after he won the Cy Young, by the way. He just won the Cy Young, and he's like, move me to shortstop. But uh, the way that I like to think about it is, you got two ALCS MVPs. I mean, Escobar yeah. won it in fourteen, and Kane, won, or maybe it's reversed actually. But um, they both won ALCS MVPs, which is incredible. But you don't get in the position that you get in without those two guys. And yeah. honestly, that's one of the very few trades in, in recent memory that I can think of that we've actually benefited from. Yeah. Uh, like the Mike Moustakis trade. I, I don't know if you uh, – we got Brett Phillips and Jorge Lopez. Yeah. Yeah, that did uh... – <laughs> No, we lost you know, on that one. You know, I was excited for Brett Phillips from a perspective of when he was very early on. I think he was very up and coming. Um, but as he's, you know, that's one of the ones we talk about when, when the situation becomes real, the performance just wasn't there. And yeah, that was a terrible uh, return. And, you know, yeah. and that kind of goes back to some of the trades we did make. I mean, if you think about it with like Wade Davis, you know, we got Jorge Soler and they got Wade Davis, basically they did go win a, a world series with Wade Davis. But after that, you know, he ended up, basically fizzling out too because he went to the Rockies, signed that big deal and really wasn't 
the way Davis we knew. Mm -hmm. And now he's back with us. And it's just like, you know, I, I, I think about that one and it's just incredible to think, you know, some of those, like they were talking about the Johnny Cueto trade too. You know, if he honestly didn't do what he did in that, uh, I think it was the world series game. Mm -hmm. That trade actually would have been a terrible trade because he really just, I, I mean, they didn't get a whole lot from us. Um, in, in return as far as how it panned out but I mean I, you gave up a decent chunk to get Johnny Cueto and if he didn't have that game he would have been a, it would have been a bust so we'll see I remember the Cueto thing like he pitched in the the two memorable ga- memorable games that I can think of is he pitched in game five of the ALDS against yeah. the Astros at home pitched a gem and then I think it was game two of the World Series but I remember specifically in Toronto he had a terrible game. Like when he wasn't supposed to be great, he wasn't like he yeah. was pretty bad. But like you said, I mean, if he doesn't win those games for us, you lost Brandon Finnegan. That's kind of the name that's jumping out to me right now. And he didn't yeah. end up being much, but who knows if he was in our system, if he would have turned out to be any better. So it's like, just looking back at the past, it's kind of crazy how like some of the smallest moves that we made kind of turned out to be so good. Yeah, for sure. Cause I know John, I think John Lamb was a part of that trade and and everybody was so, so up in arms because they're like, John Lamb's supposed to be this next, you know, he had some off the field issues, but mm-hmm. they're, they were kind of upset about that. And then he definitely fizzled out and disappeared from baseball. And, you know, it's just, it, yeah, like he said, it's just, you go back and you look and, and really that, that Ben Zobris one, I, you know, I mean, what was involved with that? Wasn't it Sean Manaya? And, and now, look, he's doing halfway decent for the Oakland Athletics. Yeah. So that one maybe, you know, but Ben Zobers was clutch for us. So it's mm-hmm. just really, it's tough. It's good to reflect. I go back and I actually go to YouTube every once in a while and I go back and watch the hype videos for the 15 World Series and mm-hmm. even the 14. And it's good to relive those moments and stuff like that. So speaking of that, you know, when you were, where were you like, what, did you watch it from your house? Where, did you get to go to any games? Like, what what was going on with that? I've never been to Royals playoff game, but if that if we miraculously make it in this year or next year, I'll be there. Um, but you know, it's it's funny, kind of like with the the Chiefs. I can think of where I was for all of them, like yeah. literally all of them. I can remember the order in which we won and lost the games. I mean, the Royals uh, were kind of my ride or die team, like. Uh, in the early 2010s, I guess you could say, like I, I loved baseball kind of before I even really loved football because yeah. uh, I played the game growing up and I just, I loved it so much. And they were an entertaining thing to watch. Not saying the chiefs weren't, but you know, at the time uh, I've been watching the Royals for a long time, but like, I just kind of was able to understand a little bit more. So uh, I was diehard Royals fan and yeah. it was, it was awesome to see because, you know, at the time I remember that, that wild card game, I watched a little bit of it, but me being, I think I was like 14 50, or maybe even younger than that. I thought, wait, no, I'd have been like 12 or 13 at the time. So I didn't really understand the point that it was lose or go home. Like at the yeah. time I was like, I thought we had a series. And then I realized the next day, cause um, I was like, Oh, we woke up and then we had to play the angels. But I just remember being like, wow, that game was incredible. And then uh, obviously what followed from that one. And I, I just, those are some very fond memories. Cause it's just like, uh, especially because at that time we went like eight no to get to the World Series, so every time it was just like, are the Royals yeah. going to go undefeated? Are the Royals going to go undefeated? Uh, it was it was pretty spectacular. Yeah, it was just it, you know I I do remember going to I got to go to a few of them. Um, I went to a lot of the Astro series in both years, um, and you know the the one that I remember was when Colin McHugh pitched against us, and I actually think we ended up losing. Uh, that would have been I yeah, think that we was game up- one. Yeah, we lost that one. Um, but I was also at the – I can't remember. I'd have to go back through my phone. It was just – the experience was just incredible. Um, and I just kept – I, you know, it's something I always remember. I still have the ticket. And, um, yeah, it was I'll just – I'll tell me. you what. I, I love Chiefs playoff football more than most things. Royals playoff baseball in October, it's an unmatched feeling because it's like – you just kind of get because and I feel like baseball is in a way it's like you have more of a chance because it's a yeah. seven to or five to seven game series. So you have an actual chance of winning it. And you don't have to get too worked up over one single game. But, you know, playoff baseball in Kansas City, I still I could hear that crowd in my head right now. Like we supported that team very well. And it's just it kind of brings back fond memories thinking about playoff baseball. And I, I can't wait to get it back. I tell you, and that and that's what's crazy is because like the city was what you know 
just people wearing Royals, you know, attire and you would see Royals flags on people's cars. I, I mean, the city was just on another level. And like you said, it, the, I think, you know, I, I, I grew up and I'm just a diehard Kansas City fan. But did I ever envision – I honestly – it's hard for me to say who I envisioned going to a championship and at least winning a championship first. I always actually hoped it was the Royals mm-hmm. uh, because, like you said, I, I did the same thing. I grew up playing baseball. I actually played in college, um, and, and it's just always a, been a passion of mine. I've coached, um, and, and so it's always been something that I was just like, man, I hope this happens. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to back, and it was just like, this is the most incredible. Like, your adrenaline for each game. Like, I don't think yeah. I ever sat down – I was like honed in, uh, but yeah, man, it, it, I also look forward to like the Chiefs Super Bowls though, but I think there's a lot more, like you said, it's, it, I would say Royals, you have less pressure just because you know, it's a series mm-hmm. where with like the Chiefs, when we were playing the 49ers and it was halftime and we were down, man, I've never felt so sick in my life. It's, but, it's This is going to sound really weird, but it's like the nostalgia because like the weather wasn't really cold yet but like the leaves were falling and it's just like i can remember all that stuff because yes. it was such a such a yes. fun time yeah and, and that's what was incredible man i'll never forget the when we you know mike mustakas fields that ball throws it to hosmer against the orioles and it was just like an eruption i think honestly like as, as crazy as it's not i think i started crying honestly because i was just like this is happening yeah. we're going so yeah man uh it, it's just good to be able to talk about this stuff and, and hopes mm-hmm that, you know, we get to to see it again. And that's what, you know, I was telling my wife because we have a, a two-year-old and I'm like, that's one thing I want for him eventually is to understand what we got to go through. Cause we always got to hear everyone, at least for me, I always hear, heard, Hey, you know, back when we won the world series in uh, 1985, you know, we won the world series and it's like, yeah, I wish I could experience that. And then we did. And it's just like, I, I hope my son gets to experience that too. It'd just be incredible. Mm. And I, I'm more fortunate than you because you're you're older than me, and you had to go through a lot more losing baseball than I did. Even though I had to suffer a little bit too, but um, I, I do think that we're going to get back to that goal, whether it is uh, uh, ten years from now or seven or not. I don't know when it's going to be, but you know this team is got the groundwork, and I think that if Dayton Moore can just keep making moves and uh, don't screw up too many with the trades, I think there will be. Uh, at least competing for a chance to go back there sometime soon. For sure. You know, the, the final thing I'll touch on too, is it's something that uh, they were hitting on also in that, in that radio broadcast broadcast was, um, you know, they were talking about how Dayton's like, Hey, I don't know if I can, you know, cause you hit on it perfectly. You know, when you're not going to be able to pay $300 million for a starting pitcher, you're just not. And that's something mm-hmm. Dayton told Ned. He's like, Hey, look, I, I'm not going to be able to go out and get you from a GM perspective some stud elite starting pitching. He's like, what I can do is get you pitchers that are going to get you four to five and then, you know, maybe even six. And we're going to lock down seven, eight, nine with the most elite bullpen we can do. And and he said that. And um, Mm -hmm. obviously we understand you had Kelvin Herrera, you had Wade Davis and you had Greg Holland. I mean, that was incredible. And they said that that actually changed the wave. And if you go back and look now at pitchers who, who signed from a relief perspective are signing max dollar deals. And that, happened because of the Kansas City Royals I mean what do you think of that I mean yeah it's like I remember being in that uh in those moments get it to the fifth give it to the <laughs> bullpen game's over like yeah. it was it was that automatic it's just like get us to that point it's kind of like it's just like give Pat back the ball all you got to do is give Pat back the ball with a chance to win he's gonna get it done it's just yeah. it, it was something that really is unbelievable and you're probably never gonna see it again a, a bullpen so dominant but um, honestly, like you said, that it is changing the way that the contracts get signed and the dollars that are being thrown out there. Um, but honestly, some of the guys that we had and, and have right now, like I see some major potential in Stallmont. Yeah. No one really saw that in the beginning. Like they kind of no. developed into the players in which they were. I mean, I, hell, I even remember going to a game where Wade Davis was a starter. Yes. Like that, that's how long ago that was. But it's just kind of like a change of scenery. And I think that. Um, the bullpen's kind of always been a negative connotation. Like, oh, you're not good enough to start. Go to the bullpen. Yeah. But now it's just like the bullpen's kind of where the dogs are because you need to end the game. Like in high pressure yeah. situations or you need to get an out, like if it's a, like a bases loaded situation or there's two outs and you need somebody to get that third out, you need somebody with the demeanor to come in and end it. <laughs> and I, I think that 
Uh, the Royals have some of those guys, but they're they're sure changing the way that these contracts get signed for sure. Yeah, you know, that's one person I always wanted to see in the pen. You know, now it maybe not so much, but Danny Duffy, man, when he was in the pen, he was touching upper 90s. Yeah. And he has that attitude and that mentality, man. And he got it from James Shields. And I would just, you know, I think he would be a good bullpen guy, but he's pitching well right now until he got hurt. So, yeah. but man, I, I really do appreciate you coming on again. This was, this was incredible. Um, you know, again, this, these opportunities just to be able to talk to you about stuff like this is just a lot of fun. And I know viewers are going to definitely enjoy it. So, um, you know, it's, Good to talk about the Royals because it seems like there for a while it was a little bit of a lull, but uh, it from from a fan perspective, it's nice just to get that out there. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, we got to get these these Royals fans active on YouTube because they're not they're not. I mean, we have like a like a four or five hundred amount, but we got to get a few more because I know that when this team gets better, we'll get more viewers. But uh, uh, this team is on the cuff of being very good in the next couple of years. Yeah, and that's what's going to be exciting is just covering it from now and just like. I know you talked about it from your YouTube channel um, uh, when you, I think, I can't remember, was it 3,000 subscribers where you did a live stream and you said like, I was doing the Chiefs, I think it was, where you said, I just wanted to at least keep a timeline. Yeah, where I could go back and, it. Yeah, go back and relive it, man. And that's kind of, you know, that's what's going to be unique because I definitely want to keep the Royals like a track for the Royals where we're at now and, and see where we are in a couple of years. And that'd be incredible just to go back and be like, look, this is, yeah, I had an interview with Michael on this day and we were talking about this could happen here and it'd be just awesome. So mm -hmm. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Thank you for coming on. And uh, I, I can assure you guys, this won't be the last one. So thank you. No problem. All right, guys, as always, have a good day.